G'day aspiring engineers. Some of you have just completed the 16 basic tutorials in basic part modelling following Infusion 360. The question is, what now? What's next? So in this video I want to talk to you about what you're interested in and uh, share also with you a few of my goals uh, both in the short term and the long term. Stick around. If you're new, I'm Arnold Roundtree and welcome to Future Engineering. Tell me what you'd like this channel to cover. Leave a comment below and tell me what you'd like to know. Otherwise, I'll just have a great time and I'll be talking about what I like. Well, here's a few ideas to get you started. I still teach engineering in the middle level in an old-fashioned classroom in a university in Australia. And that's part of the old world that's now passing away. Now that we're living in the fourth industrial revolution, you might ask, what is this about a fourth industrial revolution? Oh, it's for you. It's the fourth industrial revolution. So we started off with a 16 part series of tutorials on uh, basic 3D part modeling with Fusion 360. And that's because everyone who works in engineering and manufacturing has to work on that CAD model. All of the jobs revolve around the CAD model. That's true for the professional engineers, it's true for the designers, it's true for the draftsmen, and it's true for all the office staff as well, as well as marketing and sales. Not only all the white colour jobs, but also the workers in the factory. All of the tradesmen work on the CAD model. I mean the, the factories where the robots are. Everybody works on the CAD model. The 16 basic tutorials are in a playlist on that YouTube channel, and they're about 3D part modelling in CAD. That's only step one. We could go on and we could do a whole series on intermediate CAD modelling and then advanced part modelling. Or we could jump straight into assemblies. That is, putting parts together and arranging them so that they move and work. Did you know that engineering has a language? And it's a graphical language. So here's an example. And uh, you've seen these before. Some people call them a blueprint. You've got a lot to learn about engineering drawings. Not only about how to read them, but also how to produce them. You know, the paperless design office is coming, but it's not here yet. And even when that paperless design office does come, these things may not be on paper, but they will be on the screen. And they'll have the same kind of information on them, the same conventions, the same traditions, all the things about these things will still be the same, uh, even though the form might change. It's going to take the same skills and knowledge in order to communicate with engineers. We could do a whole series just on these drawings. Then there's CAM, and that is computer-aided machining, where you take your CAD model and uh, you send it to a CNC machine or a 3D printer and actually make a part. Then there's CAE, computer-aided engineering. This is where you take your part and treat it like a virtual prototype. You test it on the screen and you find out whether it's going to be strong enough or flexible enough, or whatever the question might be. And then you change it and you test it again and again and again and you make your part a great deal better than it was on that first experimental try. You've changed your part and you've developed it a great deal without even having to prototype once and you know how much it costs to make a prototype. It is very expensive but uh, you can prototype on your screen on your CAD model. That's an advantage. You know it used to be a postgraduate topic but these days, all of the CAD programs, the lower end and the mid-range, including Fusion 360, have got this simulation capability built into the software, this computer-aided engineering capability. And not only are engineers expected to be able to use this kind of software, but nowadays even designers and draftsmen are expected to be able to use the software and interact with the software, probably under the supervision of a qualified engineer. The software runs best on an engineering workstation or a supercomputer. So what we've been doing with my students is I've been getting them to set up simulations and then on a normal, very ordinary computer and then we upload them to the cloud and we run them on a free supercomputer in the cloud. And we could do a little bit of that here. You could follow along on your old computer at home. I say that because you've probably got an old computer at home. So tell me, are you interested in learning CAD, CAM and CAE? I love teaching and I'm setting up some courses and I'd love to involve you in some of that down the track. I love education. My wife and I homeschooled all of our children and so I've got some strong opinions about education. So I might drop a few opinions here and there. 
while I'm at it, I'll drop a few opinions about middle level education for engineering and also higher education since I've been working at one university or another for several years now, a couple of decades. One thing that a lot of homeschool children do is start a home business as part of their education. I would love to pour some oil on that fire. There are so many opportunities for small family business, backyard inventors, hobbyists and makers now that mass production is fading away into the past and mass customization is becoming more of a thing. Big business, big government, big unions and big universities have all had their day. Get ready for a new world. In my classroom at the uni we discuss everything about an engineering project. That is all the stakeholders. There are community groups, government regulators, industry associations and then there's the media as well. Everyone wants to put their oar in and so we end up talking about economics, politics, culture and even religion. It's amazing how all of these things impinge on an engineering project. Sometimes it gets a bit rowdy in my classroom, but that's okay, it makes it interesting. Maybe we could do a bit of that here too. So I also teach material science and metallurgy. Every engineer needs to know what they're going to make stuff out of. 500 years ago there were only a few options, 100 years ago there were a few more choices, but today there are tens of thousands of materials that you can buy off the shelf and just as many more that can be customised. How are you going to choose the right material for the job? You need to know. Not only are there new materials, but there are new processes. 3D printing is here, but it's not for everything just yet. Nanotechnology is here sort of, but not quite. There are lots of intermediate steps and a range of emerging technologies. Why don't we sort out some of those? Keep in mind that you can do a lot of them at home in your garage. So leave a comment below. Tell me what you need to know. This is Future Engineering. So if you're thinking about a career in engineering, then do yourself a favour, make a start today and sign up to this channel and I'll see you in the future.